Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to the recap of the November 2020 Chemnitz Dialog live stream. Last month we were inspired by a beautiful, I'm not sure if it's a rock walkway or wall, but all of these neutral tones are really, really gorgeous and so I dyed a lot of colorways inspired by that. Now right here I have some yarn. This is Dyer Supplier Silvery Sock, which is jam-packed with 20% Selena. And I used this with the leftover dyes that we had mixed. In my dedicated dye pot I have maybe a couple inches of water. Uh, and now I want to steam set this color. I did the dyeing live stream goodness. Was it on Monday or Tuesday before Thanksgiving? One of the two days. And then uh, today's the Sunday after Thanksgiving. So things are set for a little longer than they really needed. But we've got these beautiful tonal colorways. And how tonal they are, we'll have to see once it dries. I do see some tonal variation in here, but there's no color left in the water. Uh, you can see here in this one, some of that tonal nature is a little more obvious, but there were some questions about why set up a cool vet like this? Why not just put everything in a dye pot? And at the time, my dye pot was really, really limited. Like I had things on all the burners on my stove, so I didn't have an easy source to apply heat to this yarn. So setting things up like this and letting it sit I mean, you don't need to go quite as long as I did, but even just 24 hours will allow the color to absorb into the yarn, and then you can do a quick 20 to 30 minute steam set after the fact. And that's exactly what I'm gonna go do. I'm gonna go steam set this for 20 to 30 minutes, depending on how long it takes to get nice and steamy. So if you have space to leave no dye behind, if you wanna get some leftover color eyes dyed up, there's no reason why you need to set up a cool vat, but I had four skeins that I had sitting off to the side until I could steam them. I could have done that if I had the containers with 10 times as much. Whereas if I'm doing something on the stovetop, I'm really, really limited by what I can have going on the stove at any one time. So I hope that over the next year, I can explore more with ways that I can, as a small batch dyer, scale things up a little bit more and share that with all of you because I know that there are many of you who might be starting your own businesses as yarn dyers and things like that. And so this is something that I'm interested in exploring because a lot of the techniques I know I love to do work great for small batches and are probably harder to scale up. And so I'm definitely not done doing small batches and playing with that, but I'm interested in ways that, you know, maybe you can try more things in one day and playing around with that more. So I hope that makes sense. In this live stream, I died, goodness, I think for maybe five different yarn bases between Dyer Supplier and Knit Picks. I am an affiliate marketer with both companies, which does mean I earn commission if you make purchases through my links, but obviously you have no obligation to. However, if you would like to learn more about the bases that I'm about to show you, the finished dyed versions of, uh, you can find my affiliate links down in the video description of this video. That's something I typically include in most of my videos because I invite all of you to replicate or build on my recipes that I create in these videos. And so there's helpful information like timestamps and things like that, usually in the descriptions of all of the dyeing tutorials. But now let's go take a look at the yarn that I dyed for the November 2020 Chemnitz Dye Along live stream. Starting at the end, let's look at our stunning Cool That Tonal yarn. It can be really hard to show the sparkle on camera, especially when I'm using a soft box. But if I bring in a little flash, you can see all of the sparkle and shimmer in here. And it is glorious. And the Cool That technique did not dull our Stellina at all. Since the silvery sock has a really silver undertone to it anyway, a grayish undertone, it is a great candidate for getting something so neutral. However, you could absolutely dye this in something bright and wild. Uh, I think, did I use it recently to do some rainbows? I don't remember. 
I love this base. It is the sparkliest Stellina based yarn that I've ever seen. To develop the colors for these rocks, I played around with a lot of different hues, but I had a feeling that sand dune and silver gray would be really great. Platinum gray and twilight gray are two colors that I really don't use very often, but I was hoping that they would bring in some other subtle notes. And then I don't think I used pecan brown, I can't remember, but in these skeins I did want to look at the difference between antique mauve and espresso bean. And for me the antique mauve was a little more pink than what I wanted, so I think that I settled with the espresso bean. So I believe that the final colors I used were silver gray, or at least a really dilute true black, blued steel, platinum, twilight gray, sand dune, and a little bit of espresso bean. I speckled sort of crudely onto this yarn just to get a sense of the hues of the different colors I wanted to use. And then I had this other skein that I used as my mop. I wiped my gloves off on it and then at the very end submerged it into some warm water that may or may not have had vinegar, which gave us this really softness throughout. A lot of times when I speckle or do yarn mops, I'll steam it right away. But if there's not acid in the yarn yet, sometimes just waiting and adding it to the pot can be really, really nice. Now, I'm 75% sure that this is what I did with both of these skeins. Normally I try to film these recaps a day or two after the live stream as soon as the yarn is dry, but I will admit that we're now mid-December. So it has been a few weeks later and I'm checking back actually to the live stream to help jog my memory a little bit, but I think that these are both really, really fun. With some more stroll fingering weight yarn, which is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, I took some of these tones and colors that I mixed and, quote, hand painted the yarn, but I didn't really hand paint the yarn. So I put the yarn inside my steam pan and then added these pastels dye to it, sort of massaging it through a little bit to give us a very hand painted feel, but this also allowed me to add more liquid so things didn't run off the counter. And I think that we got this neutral softness that has notes of brown and purple and gray. Uh, and I am really, really happy with it. I think originally my vision was to do something that felt geometric, but a lot of times when I mix colors and then come in to dye, whether on a live stream or a video, I see what the colors are doing and sort of lean into that. And so with pouring the dye from cups, it made sense to do something a little more, quote, regular, even though these aren't necessarily super repeating colorways. There is some randomness to it, but these are soft and neutral, and I am really, really excited by them. Finally, I shifted from the having a lot of the colors to something that was even more pastel, and I considered adding more color on to make these differences even bigger, but really liked the softness here. I'm not even sure if the camera is picking it up that well, but let's talk about each of these skeins individually, even though they're the same colorway. This is the limited edition Bear Merino and Mohair from Knit Picks. It's $15 for 100 grams on their website, and the limited edition tag means that once they run out, they run out. Now, the two other skeins in this, in this colorway are also limited edition, and I picked these three because I think they were three of the bases I was the least excited about. Not in a bad way, they just weren't the ones that made me ooh and want to immediately go order more. This dyed beautifully. It isn't clumping together. For being a non-superwash yarn, I'm thrilled. So it's 80% merino, 20% super kid mohair, and these tones are just so soft and different from how I usually go about dyeing yarn. But you can see there's the brown and cool, we've got these warm and cool notes, and it's just a really, really fun yarn. Next up we have the limited edition Bear Merino, and this is 80% merino wool, 20% nylon, 
And this yarn actually was missing from Knit Pick's arsenal of bear yarns. I don't think there was a non-superwash wool nylon blend. For someone who doesn't want superwash yarn, but wants that added nylon strength to make socks. And I actually, after the live stream, went and ordered more of this. It did not, for being non-superwash, it did not clump with itself and it still looks really beautiful out of the dye pot. So I'm excited to play with this further and maybe do some side-by-sides with Stroll because this is a better counterpart for superwash versus non-superwash than say comparing Stroll with Wool of the Andes. Not an exact non-superwash dupe of Stroll, but it's closer. Finally, we have the limited edition Bare Organic Merino which is a single ply, 100% organic merino yarn. Now, this one surprised me a bit because it's not substantially different from, say, Preciosa, which is also a single ply fingering, 100% merino yarn. You can see that it is sticking to itself a bit, but it was doing that. This yarn, like a single ply like this, does that anyway. So this is something that the yarn was doing before I dyed it. And I wouldn't call this felted because you can gently separate it. Oh, well not by the, the ties in the way there. You can really gently with minimal pressure separate it. And that's what you wanna see. It's just not quite as pretty being a little clumped, but uh, if you could not easily separate it, then I would start to worry that it's felted. But something that has a halo or something that is single ply with a pretty loose ply, that's something that can happen. There are some spaces on here where it feels like we got a little more pigment than the other two, but I think that it's gorgeous. It would be such a pleasure to knit with this. But the main reason why I'm not excited by this limited edition yarn is just, it's not that different from what Knit Picks already had to offer. Long story short, the limited edition yarn from 2020 is all beautiful. It's nice to see a lot of non-superwash varieties in the shop. Uh, and so if any of the fiber contents excite you, the yarn bases are beautiful. But I don't think any of them just excite me enough to try to stock up to add it to my regular rotation. But a non-limited edition yarn, that Bear Eco Superwash Alpaca Sock that's new, is a dream. And I'm very excited to have an opportunity to get more of that, even though I haven't dyed it yet. But I will at some point. Now it's time for my favorite part of these recaps, when we take a look at the yarn that you dyed inspired by the same inspiration photo. I think it is really fun to see how different dyers will look at one image and pull things that are either very similar or different technique and color wise. And it's just a lot of fun to see the variety that everyone creates. Thank you so much everyone for dyeing your colorways and submitting them so we could all enjoy them. In the future, if you want to participate in a Chemnitz dialogue and potentially be featured in the recap, share your yarn on Instagram with the hashtag Chemnitz Dialogue or reply to the inspiration photo on my Facebook page with a public comment. I love these dialogues because it is so much fun to see how similar and different colorways we can create when we're all using a similar palette and the exact same inspiration. But dyers can come up with the same colorways using completely different inspiration or something very similar like fall leaves. How many of us <laughs> myself included, have created a really saturated mystical forest colorway. So these things can happen and it's okay to have a similar inspiration as someone else. But what you don't want to do is go and draw your inspiration from another dyer. I think it's inappropriate to go through another dyer's Instagram or shop or catalog and then pull that as your source of color inspiration. Now, I'm an exception to this. As a teacher, I am inviting you to copy me. I'm sharing my recipes. So that is different. And other dyers that are inviting you to do the same, you know, that, that applies. Sorry, just picking up my kiddo from the school bus. But this is, I'm not calling anyone out. This is just a friendly reminder that you shouldn't be going through another indie dyer's yarn as your source of inspiration. There's so many places you can look from movies to TV shows to songs and the feelings that you feel and the things you see outside your window for creating colorways. And again, 
copy me because I'm teaching you and I'm inviting that. So that's a separate category. But anyway, I hope this makes sense. And yeah. And if you want more colorized, you can see my part of the show as well. I've got plenty of colorways. Plus the new Cosmo creation coming on soon. Oh, I don't know what that is. All right, everyone. I hope you enjoy these videos and please subscribe to the channel. Welcome to finish up these conclusions, but I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching. Please make sure you're subscribed and your notifications are on so you're ready for the next installment of the Chemnitz Dialogue. And well, I'll be honest, today is the 14th of December. I don't know if there's going to be a dialogue for December. Uh, it's the middle of Hanukkah and yeah, it's just been a hectic month. So if there isn't one in December, then we'll definitely be back in January. If there is one in December though, then you'll be hearing about that in the next couple of days. So thank you all so much for watching.